Hi buddies, how are you do are you doing fine today? It's Professor Suresh. Delighted to be back again for my 26th video in process of publication on YouTube today, 10th of June 2020. The topic for discussion today is environmental pollution, a global crime. Environment most often refers to natural environment which considers all living and non-living things occurring naturally. Second is the biophysical environment, the physical and biological factors along with the chemical interactions that affect an organism or a group of organisms. Other physical and cultural environments, first one is eco ecology, the branch of biology that deals with the relations of organisms to one another and to their physical surroundings. Second one, environment systems, the surroundings of a physical system that may interact with the system by exchanging mass, energy or other properties. Third one, built environment, constructed surroundings that provide the setting for human activity ranging from the large scale civic surroundings to the personal places. Fourth one, social environment, the culture that an individual lives in and the people and institutions with which they interact. Fifth one, market environment, it's a business stuff purely. The natural environment is what we are concerned about, it encompasses all living and non-living things occurring naturally, meaning in this case not artificial. The term is most often applied to the earth or some parts of earth. This environment encompasses the interaction of all living species, climate, weather and natural resources that affect human survival and economic activity. The concept of the natural environment can be distinguished as components. First one, complete ecological units that function as natural systems without massive civilized human intervention, including all vegetation, microorganisms, soil, rocks, atmosphere, or natural phenomena that occur within their boundaries and their nature. Second one, universal natural resources and physical phenomena that lack clear cut boundaries such as air, water, and climate as well as energy, radiation, electric charge and magnetism not originating from civilized human actions. In contrast to the natural environment is the built environment in such areas where humans have fundamentally transformed landscapes such as urban settings and agricultural land conversion, the natural environment is greatly modified into a simplified human environment. Even acts which seem less extreme such as building a mud hut or a photovoltaic system in the desert, the modified environment becomes an artificial one. Though many animals build things to provide a better environment for themselves, they are not humans. Hence, beaver dams and the works of mound building termites are thought of as natural. People seldom find absolutely natural environments on earth and naturalness usually varies in a continent from 100% natural to one in one extreme to 0% natural on the other. These are the two extremes of course. More precisely we can consider the different aspects or components of an environment and see that the degree of naturalness is not uniform. If for instance in an agricultural field the mineralogical composition and the structure of its soil are similar to those of an undisturbed forest soil but the structure is quite different. Natural environment is often used as a synonym for habitat. Earth science generally recognizes four spheres, the lithosphere, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere and the biosphere as correspondent to rocks, water, air and life respectively. Some scientists include as part of the spheres of the earth the cryosphere corresponding to ice as a distinct portion of the hydrosphere as well as the pedosphere corresponding to soil as an active and intermixed sphere. Earth science, also known as geoscience, the geographical sciences or the earth sciences is an all embracing term for the sciences related to the planet earth. There are four major disciplines in earth sciences namely geography, geology, geophysics and geodesy. These major disciplines use physics, chemistry, biology, chronology and mathematics to build a qualitative and quantitative understanding of the principal areas or spheres of earth. The earth's crust 
or lithosphere is the outermost solid surface of the planet and is chemically and mechanically different from underlying mantle. It has been generated greatly by igneous process in which magma cools, uh, magma cools and solidifies to form solid rock. Beneath the lith lithosphere lies the mantle which is heated by the decay of radioactive elements. The mantle though solid is in a state of reconvection. This convection process causes the lithospheric plates to move albeit slowly. The resulting process is known as plate tectonics. Volcanoes result primarily from the melting of subducted crust material or of rising mantle at mid ocean ridges and mantle plumes. And ocean is a major body of saline water and a component of the hydrosphere. A river is a natural water course, usually fresh water flowing towards an ocean, a lake, a sea or another river. A few rivers simply flow into the ground and dry up completely before reaching another body of water. A lake from Latin lacus is a terrain feature, a body of water that is localized to the bottom of basin. A body of water is considered a lake when it is inland, is not part of an ocean and is larger and deeper than a pond. A pond is a body of standing water, either natural or man-made, that is usually smaller than a lake. Humans impact the water in different ways, such as modifying rivers through dams and stream channelization, urbanization and deforestation. These impact the lake levels, groundwater conditions, water pollution, thermal pollution and marine pollution. The atmosphere of the earth serves as a key feature in sustaining the planetary ecosystem. The thin layer of gases that envelops the earth is held in place by the planet's gravity. Dry hair consists of 78% nitrogen approximately, 21% oxygen, 1% argon and other inert gases such as carbon dioxide. The remaining gases are often referred to as trace gases among which are the greenhouse gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitri nitrous oxide and ozone. Filtered air includes trace amounts of many other chemical compounds. Air also contains a variable amount of water vapor and suspensions of water dro droplets and ice crystals seen as clouds. Many natural substances may be present in tiny amounts in an unfiltered air sample, including dust, pollen and uh, spores, sea spray, volcanic ash and uh, meteorites. Meteorites. Various industrial pollutants also may be present such as chlorine, elementary or in compounds, fluorine compounds, elemental mercury and sulfur compounds such as sulfur dioxide. The ozone layer of the Earth's atmosphere plays an important role in depleting the amount of ultraviolet radiation that reaches the surface. Now there is a hole in the ozone layer which leads to more radiation via the culprits naturally. As DNA is readily damaged by UV light, this serves to protect life at the surface. The atmosphere also retains heat during the night, thereby reducing the daily temperature extremes. The dangers of global warming are being increasingly studied by a wide global consortium of scientists. These scientists are increasingly concerned about the potential long-term effects of global warming on, a natural, on our natural environment and on the planet. Of particular concern is how climate change and global warming caused by anthropogenic or uh, human malar releases of greenhouse gases. Most notably, carbon dioxide can act interactively and have adverse effects upon the planet, its natural environment and human's existence. It is clear the planet is warming and warming rapidly. This is due to the greenhouse effect which is caused by greenhouse gases which trap heat inside their atmosphere because of their more complex molecular structure which allows them to vibrate and in turn trap the heat and release it back towards the earth. You must have heard about uh, even ice melting in the polar regions very fast and the temperature uh, raising rapidly all over the globe.
This warming is also responsible for the extinction of natural habitats, which in turn leads to a reduction in wildlife population. The most recent report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the group of the leading climate scientists in the world, concluded that the Earth will warm anywhere from 2.7 to almost 11 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.5 to 6 degrees Celsius between 1990 and 2100. Efforts have been increasingly focused on the mitigation of greenhouse gases that are causing climatic changes on developing adaptive strategies to global warming to assist humans, other animals and plant species, ecosystems, regions and nations in adjusting to the effects of global warming. Some examples of recent collaboration to address climate change and global warming include the United Nations Framework Convention Treaty and Convention on Climate Change to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent the dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system. The Kyoto Protocol, which is the protocol to the International Framework Convention or Climate Change Treaty, again with the objective of reducing greenhouse gases in an effort to prevent anthropogenic climate change. The Western Climate Initiative to identify evaluate and implement collective and cooperative ways to reduce greenhouse gases in the region, focusing on, on a market-based cap and trade system. A significantly pro profound chain a challenge is to identify the natural environmental dynamics in contrast to environmental ch changes not within natural variances. A common solution is to adapt a static view neglecting natural variances to exist. Methodologically, this view could be defended when looking at processes which change slowly and short time series, where the problem arrives when the fast process turns essential in the object of the study. Climate looks at the statistics of temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, wind, rainfall, atmospheric particle count, and other, other meteorological elements in a given region over a long periods of time. Over long periods of time, weather, on the other hand is the present condition of these same elements over periods up to two weeks. People uh, use this, these terms interchangeably, weather and climate, which is wrong. Weather is a set of all the phenomena occurring in a given atmospheric area at a given time. An ecosystem also called as environment is a natural unit consisting of all plants, animals and microorganisms, which are called biotic factors in an area functioning together with all the living physical, abiotic factors of the environment. The term ecosystem can also pertain to human-made environments such as human ecosystems and human-influenced ecosystems and can describe any situation where there is relationship between living organisms and the environment. Fewer areas on the surface of the earth today exist free from human contact, although some genuine wilderness areas continue to exist without any forms of human intervention. Biomes, B-I-O-M-E-S, are conditions on the earth such as communities of plants, animals and soil organisms often referred to as ecosystems. Biomes are defined on the basis of factors such as plant structures such as trees, shrubs and grasses, leaf types such as broadleaf and needle leaf, plant spacing, forest, woodland, savanna and climate. Unlike ecozones, biomes are not defined by genetic taxonomic or historical similarities. Biomes are also often identified with particular patterns of ecological succession and climax, climax vegetation. Global bio-geochemical cycles are critical to life, most notably those of water, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus. The nitrogen cycle is the transformation of nitrogen and nitrogen containing compounds in nature. It is a cycle which includes gaseous components. The water cycle is a continuous movement of water on above and below the surface of the earth. Water can change states among liquid, vapor and ice at different various places in the water cycle. Although the balance of water on the earth remains fairly constant over time, individual water molecules can come and go. The carbon cycle is the bio-geochemical cycle by which carbon is exchanged between the biosphere pedosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere of the earth. The oxygen cycle is the movement of oxygen 
within and between its three main reservoirs the atmosphere the biosphere and the lithosphere the main driving factor of the oxygen cycle is photosynthesis which is responsible for the modern earth's atmospheric composition and life the phosphorus cycle is a movement of phosphorus through the lithosphere hydrosphere and biosphere the atmosphere does not play a significant role in the movements of phosphorus because phosphorus and phosphorus compounds are usually solids at the typical ranges of temperature and pressure found on earth <coughs> excuse me wilderness is generally defined as a natural environment on earth that has not been significantly modified by human activity wildlife includes all non domesticated plants animals and other organisms whatever we reviewed so far is from wikipedia human being beings are excellent in ruining the environment in all possible ways we can the boomerang effect is felt different ways el nino el nino acid rain earthquakes spiral increase in lifestyle diseases including the latest pandemic novel covid-19 floods volcano eruptions sleet ice during leading to fatalities smog hailstorms tornadoes hurricanes malnutrition deformities at birth deafness blindness so many things so many times the perpetrators are not affected by these natural calamities some innocent ones are affected that is really bad life is highly materialistic and people are concerned only one and only about money psychopaths who do not have any concern about the society mass extinction happening all around the globe environmental activism is on the increase and a popular one in that regard is a teenager greta thunberg a swedish hardly 17 years old she spits fire in her speeches challenging the bureaucrats and the business community since she is genuinely concerned about the environment in usa there is environmental protection agency shortly epa similarly in india we have national green tribunal ngt ultimately they are of little use about 5 decades back nobody in india would have fantasized paying money to breathe clean air drink clean water and noise reduction measures like high fidelity noise cancelling headphones etc life was so peaceful and people led, led healthy lives eating organic produce in usa there is clear clean air act and clean water act but even they are purchasing edible quality water spend money in oxygen parlors to breathe pure oxygen everything is artificial nowadays including love and affection industrialization is the main culprit too much it's over saturated i would say we are gone beyond the limits india is supposed to be an agrarian country but the farm lands area has declined drastically on the contrary demand for farm produce has increased multifold as a result of population explosion real soon all of us will be forced to move around with a self contained breathing apparatus scba already we have started wearing masks face shields googles footwear covers personal protective equipment shortly pp overalls and gloves indians are well known for flouting the rules and regulations to the core classic examples usage of cone speakers banned decades back firecrackers with high decibel levels playing music speeches amplified multiple times with the aid of such powerful light speak loud speakers either at places of worship marriage halls political during elections from automobile industrial effluents are let out freely without any treatment whatsoever in lakes rivers etc these are highly rampant from dyeing units dye coloring leather tanneries chemical industries air pollution is mainly caused by industries automotives and farmers to burn burning stubble that is very common in uh, north india people suffocate as a result of all this even the capital city delhi the air quality is so bad water pollution is mainly caused by industries 
noise pollution is mainly caused by industries automotives airplanes fire crackers party animals and hotels i said party animals not human beings food contamination is mainly by sellers process so basically everything on our mother planet earth is contaminated adulterated should we be proud about these things and raise our colors some people have a myth that the role is very limited even the ocean is made up of so many tiny droplets only carbon footprint is very high in developed countries since their per capita energy consumption is so high about 2800 liters of water is required for one gene span as a rain you know neutral ph value is 7 as a less than 7 ph value less than 5.6 is caused by emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide which react with the water molecules in the atmosphere to produce acids sulfuric acid and uh, nitric acid h2so4 and hno3 acid rain is a popular term referring to the dispo- deposition of wet rain snow sleet fog cloud wa- water and dew and dry acidifying particles and gases as the components scientific evidence indicates that stra- stratospheric ozone is be- being destroyed by a group of manufactured chemicals containing mainly chlorine or bromine called ozone depleting substances shortly ods ods are very stable non toxic non flammable and environmentally safe in the lower atmosphere which is why they become so became so popular in the first place however their very stability allows them to flow, float up intact to the stratosphere and once the they are broken apart by the intense ultraviolet light releasing chlorine and bromine chlorine and bromine demolish the ozone at an alarming rate by stripping an atom from the ozone molecule main ods cfcs hcfcs halons cc14 nitric oxides nitrous oxides methyl chloroform ch3 cc13 major sources are solvent cleansing products refrigerants foam products chlorofluorocarbon cfcs are the most widely used ods accounting for over 80% of total stratospheric ozone depletion used as coolants in refrigerators freezers and air conditioners in buildings and cars manufactured before 1995 also found in industrial solvents dry cleaning agents and hospital sterilants also used in foam products such as soft foam padding example cushions and mattresses and rigid foam example home insulation halons and hydro bromo fluorocarbons hbfc halons and like cfcs contain bromine which destroys ozone 100 times more than chlorine halons are used primarily in fire extinguishers and methyl bromide pesticide methyl chloroform is used mainly in industries as cleansing solvent for vapor degreasing cold cleaning adhesives and chemical processing carbon tetrachloride is mainly used as solvent and in fire extinguishers hydrofluorocarbons are major transitional substitutes for cfcs much less harmful to stratospheric ozone than cfcs still cause some ozone destruction and are potent greenhouse gases impacts of ozone depletion are skin cancer sunburn and premature aging of the skin uv radiation can damage several parts of the eye including the lens cornea retina and conjunctivitis it has become very common of uh, people using creams to protect the skin from all, all these harms weakening of the human immune system uh, yeah creams uh, they call it sun protection factor spf several of the world's major crop species are particularly vulnerable to increased ultraviolet radiation resulting in reduced growth photosynthesis and flowering plankton are threatened by increased increased uv radiation ecology may be defined as a scientific study of the relationship of, of living organisms with each other and with the environment the emphasis is on relationships between organisms on the components of the environment namely abiotic non living and biotic living ecology is defined derived from two greek words oikos 
which means home or place to live in logos meaning study literally it means study of home or nature ecology not only deals with the study of the relationship of individual organisms with the environment but also with the study of populations communities ecosystems biomes and biosphere as a whole ecosystem is a functional unit of nature encompassing complex interaction between its biotic living and abiotic non living components for example a pond is a good example of ecosystem it can absorb as small as a single tree components of ecosystem are broadly grouped into abiotic and biotic components natural ecosystems ecosystem is ecosystem dependent on solar radiation and energy subsidies alternative sources such as wind rain and tides example tropical rainforest tidal estuaries and coral reefs man made ecosystem is dependent on solar energy and on fossil fuel desertification is one of the most alarming process of environmental degradation it is about land degradation the less of the land's biological productivity caused by human induced factors and climate change affecting one third of the earth's surface and over a billion people moreover it can have devastating consequences in terms of social and economic costs the impacts of land degradation on global lands food security and the quality of the environment are of major significance and concern when one considers that only about 11% of the global land surface can be considered as prime land yet this must feed the 8 billion people inhabiting the world today and the 8.2 billion later okay it increases that's why i said population explosion long term food productivity is threatened by soil degradation which is now severe enough to reduce crop yields to approximately on approximately 16% of the agricultural land especially in africa and uh, central america as well as the african pastures the rate of land degradation is highest in sub saharan africa where it is estimated that losses in productivity of cropping land are in the order of 0.5 to 1% annually suggesting a cumulative loss of at least 20% over the last 40 years Sub- sustainable development of countries affected by drought and desertification can only come about through concerted efforts based on sound understanding of the different factors that contribute to land degradation around the world climatic variations are recognized among the major factors contributing to land degradation as defined in the united nations convention to combat desertification shortly uncd and it is important to understand the respective roles of the different climatic factors in land degradation the world meteorological organization shortly wmo contributes to the understanding of the interactions between climate and land degradation through dedicated observations of the climate system bioaccumulation refers how pollutant enters a food chain means concentration of pollutant from the environment to the first organism in a food chain occurs when an organism absorbs a toxic substance at a rate greater than that at which he or she can digest bio magnification refers to increase of toxic chemicals concentration up the food chain a man induced process occurs with the mobile and non degradable chemicals fat soluble pollutants only ddt ddt concentration a carbon sink is anything that absorbs more carbon than it releases while a carbon source is anything one second down carbon source is anything that releases more carbon than it can absorb forests soils oceans and the atmosphere all store carbon and this carbon moves between them in a continuous cycle this constant movement of carbon means 
that for us act as sources are sinks at different times. Oceans are the largest active carbon sink on earth absorbing more than a quarter of the carbon dioxide that humans put into the air. Carbon sequestration is long term storage of carbon dioxide to mitigate global warming and avoid dangerous climate change. Carbon offset is a reduction in emissions of carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases made in order to compensate for or to offset an emission made elsewhere. Carbon tax, a tax based on greenhouse gas emissions shortly G G greenhouse gases generated from burning fuels is basically a tax on fossil fuels especially those used by motor vehicles intended to reduce the emission of carbon dioxide puts a price on each ton of greenhouse gases emitted sending a price signal India does not like it and is against carbon tax from goods imported from India to other countries. Electronic waste or e-waste describes discarded electrical or electronic devices used electronics which are defined which are destined for re reuse resale salvage recycling or disposal are also considered e-waste major pollutants from e-waste are lead mercury chromium 6 cadmium brominated flame retardant barium beryllium toners and phosphorus developed countries dump all the hazardous waste in developing countries and underdeveloped countries and make so much money to even ships with so many so much asbestos which is a carcinogen he sent to such countries for tear down even world trade steel scrap contaminated with the rotten human bodies was sold to india so many hospitals dispose of the hazardous waste by dumping them in dumpster, dumpsters meant for household waste these are premeditated violations and they managed to get away because of corruption and loopholes in the system so many accidents have happened in chemical industries, nuclear power plants all over the world and hardly any compensation is paid to the affected families. Dilution is not a solution for uh, liquid effluents. Similarly, erecting a tall chimney is uh, not the solution for gaseous pollutants. All effluents should be treated properly as per the standard protocol and then be disposed. Manufacturing and service organizations do not like to spend money to mitigate the environmental hazard. Government should mandate environmental pollution mitigation as the prime corporate social responsibility CSR for all organizations. Heavy penalties should be levied to such perpetrators, teach them a bitter lesson which they will never ever forget in their lives. Then nobody else will even think of those kinds of acts in the future. Rules and regulations should be universally applicable. Multinational corporations, shortly MNCs, establish hazardous plants in developing and underdeveloped countries mainly to evade litigation expenses. Of course, labor cost is also very low. That's an added benefit. Deforestation has led to wildlife extinction and frequent men-animal conflicts. Oil spills and seawater contamination has affected marine life adversely. Forest fire destroys fee trees, natural herbs in abundance in forest and is another cause for air pollution. People who thrive on collecting metal from trash in solid landfills set fire to extract metal from trash easily which affects the humans as well as animals. Granite quarrying and sand quarrying in riverbeds has affected farming and groundwater levels dipping drastically as well as quality in adjoining areas. People working in such quarries die gradually because of silicosis. The lungs get, get filled with the silicone from these quarries, asbestosis, which is asbestos fibers filling up the lungs, lungs, is also common, which leads to cancer. Usage of hormones for milch animals and chicken results in girls attaining puberty when they are just seven or eight years old. Infertility is also on the increase. People shorten the lifespan by eating fast food and other junk food. Indiscriminate extraction of groundwater, even from agricultural fields and rivers by companies has led to groundwater quality deterioration and is a cause for earthquakes too. India is popular for so many holy rivers. They cannot be considered holy anymore. Credit goes to industries for dumping liquid industrial effluents blatantly besides people dumping dead bodies and bathing humans as well as animals in such holy rivers. Usage of synthetic fertilizers and insecticides 
has affected our health adversely. So, if environmental degradation has to be, has to be curtailed, rules and regulations should be made more stringent and should be enforced to the court. That is much more important. Management should be severe for any violation either intentional or unintentional. Refinements cannot happen overnight, but unless otherwise we make a start at least now, we will repent it later since these kind of damages are irreversible. It is a permanent damage. Discussion on topics like this can go on forever. Anyhow, let me pass here. I didn't, did not stay stop. Stop the exploitation of nature. We will meet again real soon. Rest in peace and harmony. Always watch these videos with closed captions, subtitles for enhanced comprehension. I know I rushed through here to complete the presentation within 20 minutes max. This is the time limit I had set myself to retain the viewer's attention. I know nowadays I exceed this time limit since I make honest attempts to cover the selected topic more elaborately, including so many intricate details referring to so many articles and books too. Stay at home as much as possible to maintain social distance, distancing attributed to pandemic novel COVID-19 and prolong your lifespan. Lead a healthy life. All the best.